I'm so old-fashioned, I'm always appalled when the wives of prominent political figures take an active part in the campaign. But it is pleasant to have here this morning. There are 10 million people who mispronounce your name. First, spell your first name, please. It's G-E-I-L-L-S. And how do you pronounce it? It's called Giles, and it's Gaelic. So you should know about that, Jack. You shouldn't I'm be having trouble. I'm not a mis Highlander. I'm well, just a Lowlander. What does it mean in Gaelic? I don't know what it means. Isn't that Giles. <laughs> <laughs> Giles. Yeah, Giles. Much. You say what if John, the prime minister, called you Giles? Probably all sorts of other things. No, but if he <laughs> call you Giles, he calls me Jill. Calls you or Jill. darling, if I'm being nice. Well, you don't have to call me darling this oh, morning. Okay, well, I will if you like. Knock on my door and give me a pitch for John. Um, you're an Jim undecided. Patrol, knock on the door. All right, hello, and I'm, I'm Jill Turner. I'm John Turner's wife, and I'm here helping him in his campaign. Um, oh. How do you find the elections going? I hate well, them all. slam. Well, I know how she finds the election. Uh, well, I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, is there anything I can discuss with you? Are there any issues that you aren't clear about or things you don't quite understand the, our party's position on? I'd be glad to do my best to help you. Abortion. Abortion. Well, I, uh, our party's policy on abortion is that we have legislation in effect at the moment which tries to coordinate the two very opposed views in this country, which are very strongly felt by each side. And we feel at the moment, or the party feels, and my husband feels, that this is the best way to accommodate these two very different points of view. However, what must be done in this issue is to make sure that women across the country have equal access to, in fact, the enactment of this law. And in some cases, this is not the case, and we want to see this improved. Freedom of choice. Freedom of choice in... in yeah, and is that what you're telling me, freedom of choice? No, no, I'm saying the law says now that in certain cases where oh, the yeah. health and uh, health of the mother is affected, then there are, are procedures through which you can go to have a, a legal abortion. But it's not a total pro-choice position. Okay. I want the rope brought back. I want capital punishment. Will your husband bring back the rope? All these people who kill and slaughter mayhem all across the country and they're out in five minutes. I want capital punishment. What does John Turner think about capital punishment? You should ask John Turner. Didn't you ask him when he was here? No. <laughs> Why didn't you? But I'm the guy at the door. Okay. Um, all right, I want to know what about the Liberal Party on capital punishment? The Liberal First of all, what about Jillis, Jill Turner on capital punishment? You influence the guy. I'm, I'm of two minds, if I can speak personally. I'm of yeah. two minds because I know the dreadful fear is always that we execute someone who is who is not guilty. I mean, this is this is the, always the argument in favor of, of not having cap, cap, right. capital punishment. And this is a very serious question. We don't want to ever risk as executing someone who is innocent. However, when I see the prison guards appearing to be put more and more in risk and in getting in more and more danger, where if someone kills a prison guard, there is no increased penalty. They have received the maximum penalty. So what is to protect these guards from, from further The next killing? killing is a free one. After you've killed well, one, right. you can and kill think, for free. I think previously when, we, when the law said for prison guards and police officers, which was an exception to, to the law, that people who did kill prison guards and, and policemen would be subject to, to capital punishment if found guilty of a capital crime. Then the law was changed to, to eliminate it. Personally, you would go back to that. Well, I, I think it's something, and it's the old story, but I would like to look at it very carefully and see if maybe we haven't left these people without any protection at all. And we can't have them going around in cages through the prisons, you know, where they have bulletproof glass. I mean, yeah. they're human beings who are doing a very difficult job. And we have to look at this very carefully because if they're all going to get killed, we're not going to have any more. But that's only guards. your personal view. Yes, that's my personal view. But I think it's subject. Uh, it's a subject that obviously invokes very strong feelings in Canadians. And maybe we have to look at it again. Maybe we have to open it up and say, let's look at this again. Don't your husband was just behaved abominably when he allowed Trudeau to lean on him and make him sign all these that orgy of patronage. Name no, of goodness. No, listen, I'll tell you something. He wasn't, he wasn't lent on. Mr. Trudeau, whether you agree with it or not, had the perfect right to make those appointments. He was the prime minister who was leaving office. He was still prime minister. You don't have to agree with all the appointments he made or the sheer numbers of the appointments, but he did have the right. But he had the, he had the right to make them at any time while he was still prime minister. He didn't have to make a deal with John to make them after he quit. No, it wasn't a question of making a deal with John. He was going to make them anyway. He was going to make them all at the last day in office, or what happened was, as you know so well, Jack, uh, there was a question by appointing the MPs who were on the list to their appointments before uh, my husband got sworn in as prime minister, the House would have been left in a minority position which could have produced a constitutional crisis. So
So it was really more of a bookkeeping thing than it was my husband making these appointments. They were Mr. Trudeau's appointments. They were all his appointments. But they he, were not my husband's appointments. He they got blamed for them. He, he got, got blamed for I the think, McAtee thing. Well, I know, but I don't think I don't think he should have been blamed for it. You could argue that we should have allowed the constitutional crisis to take place, and come what may, that might have been in retrospect the better solution. But the, all those appointments would have been made. Nothing would have been changed. Well, actually, he could have said, and you'll forgive me for saying this to Trudeau. The hell with you. You want to put me in a weak position, you do it. You did it, not me. I'm confident to go to the country and I'll go after you've made all your orgy of patronage. Right, but then there would have been a minority of, of, of members sitting in the House, and that um, was the problem. And there's been legal so opinions on both sides, and even a constitutional okay. expert at UBC, your illustrious university, said that my husband was right in this area. Uh -huh. Actually, it was still awful, wasn't it? Well, I agree it was awful. Oh, you do? Of course I do. I mean, the McKinsey thing my is My husband special. wouldn't have made those appointments. Yeah, dreadful. But I wonder, the Tories, do you think the Tories will just do the same? Well, I was reading an article in one of our um, eminent newspapers, was it yesterday, talking Last about night. all the people that were going to be swept out of their position. Well, they've got to be fired. I agree with them on that. They've got to go. But my question is, if the Tories form the government, and I don't think that is decided yet at all, in spite of what Mr. Mulroney seems to be saying, if the Tories form the government, we will naturally be looking very carefully to see what types and quality of appointment Mr. Mr. Mulroney makes, whether they're all nonpartisan quality appointments where politics will play no part. And this is the role that Mr. Mulroney has been saying. Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's to the people, not to the party. We know that. But Mr. Mulroney has made it very clear to the Canadian people that he will not indulge in this type of patronage, this terrible patronage that Mr. Trudeau was indulging. So we will look forward to seeing what well, he does. I don't actually believe him on that yet. I don't believe him on many things. Yeah, so. but the fact I believe is Mr. Clark more, you know. As I watched Mr. Clark here in your program, Joe Clark, I thought the Tories have made a terrible mistake. If I were out there, I have a sense of honesty about Joe Clark that I do not get from Mr. Mulroney. But you, Mulroney's got to dump all these liberal hacks who've been planted there on lifetime contracts. It's disgraceful. Well, they're not all liberal hacks. I think you're. Oh, well, shall not I all. name a number of well, them? Well, they even talk about Alan Gottlieb. You can't call him a liberal hack. Well, he's. He's uh, had a very distinguished career. What about Edgar Benson? What about Don Jimison? What about Barney Danson? Well, what about Bud Judy? I mean, what about Joel Bell? You have to define what about the word Ivan hack Head? now? Come on, Jack. Because these are liberal people who party. Serve. All right. Well, hacks, faithful servants. Hack to me brings up the connotation who someone who sort of a backroom boy who's done nothing but sort of be out there at election time that deserves some sort of payoff for his hard work. These people who right. served our country well. Former important liberal cabinet I like that. Right, I like that better. But I mean, they I shouldn't think, be given lifetime jobs. No, I agree with you. I mean, the Senate. And I don't, I don't think, well, I like that the Senate, you know, the Senate is the Senate. When we're talking about some of these other positions like the CTC, oh, yeah. the CRTC, the CBC, these are positions that I think we must have the best possible people right. in. The media. You would much rather have stayed in the kitchen doing your baking and polishing John's shoes you really think that's than come out on the campaign. That's nonsense and you know it. I thought I heard you say that once. No, I, you never. It was, you're confusing me with somebody else. Must be another political party. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but were well, you dragged out of the kitchen to do this? I was, I've never. Well, I I'm, I'm come out of the kitchen easily. No one ever drags me out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm, I suppose not. Well, let's go to some phone calls. Okay. Oh, the media. Yeah. Well, you forgot have where you been, were. Have they been fair to your husband? Um, By the way, how old are you? I'm 46. How many children? I have four. Eldest? 20. Elizabeth is out here working hard in Quadra, as are now the other two sons, Michael and David. And David. Mm. Yes. Good. And you're home from Montreal? No, uh, Toronto. Toronto. That's where your real home is. What do you mean, my real home? I'm I from mean, Winnipeg. Oh, you're from Winnipeg. Yes. You're a prairie girl. I'm a Westerner. Worked on a farm. No, didn't work on a farm. Lived in the city. Lived in the I'm city. I'm still a Westerner. Okay. Jill Turner, the wife of the Right Honourable John Turner, Prime Minister of Canada. And you're really sad about him going to be beaten on Tuesday. Who says he's going to be beaten on Tuesday? Don't you think you should Joe have stayed? Joe Clark said we shouldn't count on anything yet, and I think Mr. Clark's a very wise man. Don't you think you should have stayed with Macmillan Bench? No. I think the country needs John Turner, and I think the country's going to hear from John Turner for a long time. Don't in the dark of the night you sometimes think, gosh, we were set up après moi, le deluge? Listen, in life, Life is full of challenges. You don't walk away from challenges just because of the potential downside. Mm -hmm. Go ahead to Jill Tanner. Yes, good morning. Morning. I'd like to put a question to Mrs. Turner. What is your husband's view, Mrs. Turner? Go on. And bearing in mind this is a vast regional uh, country, what is your husband's view with respect to changing, modifying our electoral system to give the West and other regions better representation 
in Ottawa. I don't know, even know if that's are, a fair question. Are you I'm talking a about a form of representational government? Because obviously our current system, the, the, no, the country is divided into yes. electoral groups which equally divide the population into whatever number of parts it is. And as, as the population tends to be centered in, in the east, th that obviously gives a, a heavier number of seats to the east. I think people have looked into the question of representational uh, um, elections, and I think in countries where they've done this, it has not worked very satisfactorily. And I think uh, it seems like too easy a solution to say, you know, we'll do this, but I think it's something that would have to be studied a lot further. But I know what you're saying, but I think we've got to give more voice to the West, and then they won't feel like they don't have adequate representation. And that's why my husband's running, because he's going to be a strong voice from British Columbia, and he won't notice that there aren't as many seats when he's in Parliament. Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I don't you believe that with the glory comes a lot of responsibility and if your husband chose to make those patronage appointments that he should have dignifiedly accepted the responsibility and not put the blame on Mr. Trudeau well, I think you have to say, what do you mean by making those appointments? My husband did not dream up the names on that list. They were not his list. They were not his choices. This was a list of appointments that Mr. Trudeau drew up to make himself. He, my husband was never consulted on these appointments. His opinion was never asked. They were Mr. Trudeau's appointments. The only thing my husband did was delay the enactment of some of these appointments from before Mr. Trudeau resigned until after he resigned. My husband had no say or no voice in any of those appointments. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Mrs. Turner, my name is Brian Williams. My uh, parents have known both you and your husband, and I went to Upper Canada yeah. along uh, with your sons, and I was a little earlier, and I also graduated from Stanford. Right. Um, I wanted to actually say that I, I believe that this campaign has, has uh, been somewhat revealing in the sense that um, I feel that your husband and yourself have handled yourselves very honorably and I feel that the press has been has done a job and I don't don't like to see that at all um, it seems like our country is going into a kind of captivity that I don't like to see you mean a Tory captivity a kind of captivity. My perspective is that of a Christian. I feel that Solzhenitsyn, who writes his political books on the world situation, he says that, that really we've come to the time in the world where the issues aren't really so much political and economic, but they're issues of integrity and spirituality. We have good leaders and we have evil leaders in the world. And the new consciousness that's going to take place. On thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I admire his views, but he'll go on forever, and he's a favorable caller. And you <laughs> we know, we've got to get we, some more unfavorable yeah, ones. Yeah, you know, know. We, we in the media do. We like to chop off them off and okay, give you the okay, nasty Okay, well, let's calls. have the nasty ones now, Jack. Right. <laughs> I can handle them. I can I'm not afraid them. to come on your show, Jack. Go ahead, please. Good Hello? morning. Yes. Is that me? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I've watched uh, Bill Clark closely in Ottawa, and his voice is rarely, if never heard in the House, and it would seem he does the work work of a clerk. So my question is... He is a clerk. Uh, my question is, why do you think the news people are just getting it through to the public now, all the great plans your husband has for the Pacific Rim and other BC plans? Uh, and, it, you know, and I agree with the last caller that, that the media has done a number. I've been at a lot of the events, and I've noticed they're interviewing negative people. They're showing the film when people are not cheering, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll be a dark day if your husband doesn't win in Quadra. So good luck, Mrs. Turner. Thank you very much. I don't think they've done a job. I think candidates do jobs on themselves. Well, Jack, let me say this to you. I was at a coffee mm. party the other day, and a woman said, I saw your husband on Jack Webster. And he was wonderful. That's the John Turner I know. He spoke out about going out and selling for Canada. Why haven't I heard that before? Why hasn't he talked about this during the campaign? And I said, I have heard him make that speech 25 times. And she said, but the information is not coming through. 
And I'm hearing this sort of all the time that what is what what the leadership, and I'm sure it applies to all the leadership. It applies to Moroni as well. Sure not, it does. No, no, I'm not saying it's just I mean, my instance, it's not being heard. When Clark was here this morning, he was talking about the reforms of the House of Commons. No one would ever ask a question at a press conference or in an interview about the reforms of the House of Commons. One of the most vital things exactly. this country needs. Exactly. See, Joe's mistake was that he was blunt, straightforward, and honest. Yeah. And Trudeau and the NDP cut his throat because of his own he couldn't count the heads, he couldn't That's do the numbers. Right. <laughs> it's always the candidate's fault, Mrs. Turner. Mm -hmm. It's never the media's fault, and I'm serious about that. No, but in this case, I think the media have not present. I think the media are there to be neutral on the news pages, to present the information to the people in in as clear a way as they can, and then let the people make up their minds. That's utopia. We obviously do not have utopia. Especially when the the, the right wing of the of the political spectrum controls some of the news media. Some of the news media. For I'm instance, glad you said that, not me, Jack. I want you to spell, <laughs> spell out those segments of the news media which you feel are twisted and biased against Turner. Well, I think biased is too strong a word, but I think there's some of the media that have known political affiliations, and I think that they're bound to let that... that Go over mail this morning, for instance, comes out and says, John Turner's a great guy, but, but we need a new change and a new team, and Maroney's not too bad, so therefore you should vote Tory. Did right. you not see it this morning? Yes, of course, I read the Globe and Mail every day, and, I I, and, I, and I'm very up-to-date on the Globe and Mail. And so nothing the Globe and Mail does really surprises me. Yeah. Uh, there's other media that I think are known to have a, a strong political association. Okay. I want to see the look in your face. If your husband loses in Quadra and nationally, will he quit and go back to Macmillan Binch or whatever? First of all, he will not lose in Quadra, and I'm not sure he's going to lose the election. Let's take hypothetically. Good. He will not go back to Bay Street. He will be out there fighting for Canada and fighting for the Liberal Party. Even if it's only a Pearson-type rump of 50 or 60 seats. It didn't last long, that, that Deep and Baker. It was a short blip on the political horizon. Yeah, the Tories do tend to self-destruct, don't They come in very briefly, they? And, they, and people come back to the Liberals, who have done all the things. Don't you think that one of the things he should have done was get rid of Lalonde right away, regarded as the evil man in Bay Street? Mr. Lalonde, I think, was was associated with a lot of unattractive legislation in the energy program. I have you're no good. question about that. You're, you've got all the phrases down pat. I think you're great. But I no think question about it. It was associated with a lot of the questionable <laughs> activities. Questionable but I think as politics. Minister of Finance, you'd have to argue that he gained a lot of respect in the business community. The business community felt comfortable that, he, that they had at least the finances of the country in, in good, honest, intelligent all right. hands. What was your university degree in? Math and physics. Oh. Go ahead, please. Yes, um, my question to, to Mrs. Turner, I, I saw in the province this morning that your husband said that the election would be won and lost in Ontario, and probably by seat that, that's true, but I mean, as a Westerner, surely he should have, you know, he's running as a Westerner, a voice of the West, surely he should appreciate that that's one of the things that just rankles British Columbians more than anything, is someone saying, well, it's, it's won in Ontario, and then I, I suppose he'll come out here and say, you know, I'll be a strong voice of the West. I mean, it's... Why did he say that? Well, no, I think what he's talking about is that in terms of sheer numbers, and this is what the previous caller was referring to, in pre terms of pre sheer numbers, Ontario is the biggest, after Quebec, is the biggest uh, block of numbers of, of seats. And so, therefore, what Ontario does, whether we like it or not, and I don't like it, and you don't like it, and he doesn't like it, but it's sort of a fact that what Ontario does is going to largely determine what's going to happen overall. Uh, I'd like to ask... Uh, why Mr. Uh, Turner, even though he was committed to running in the West, didn't get a residency out here in time to guarantee you could vote in the West? It seems like uh, he's saying he wants to run in the West, but then he can't even make sure he fulfills well, his Well, can I make two, may, may I make two points there? First of all, we have a rented townhouse in Quadra where my daughter has been living. Unfortunately, the ele and she is a student, so she theoretically could work according to the Election Act. She could work in the riding and vote in the riding if she'd been a resident of the riding as of the 21st of July. She still had a job then. She had not uh, quit her job in Winnipeg where she was working, and she did not arrive in Quadra before the 21st. It was a technical point as to where she was actually residing on the date of the election. As far as my husband is concerned, the Election Act states very clearly it's your normal place of residency. It's not where you happen to be living on, De on July the 21st. Uh, it's where you normally reside. And so, unfortunately, my husband could not, in any legal sense, justify the fact that he has been normally residing in Vancouver for the last year or the last period Does of time. Does that not make him a bit of a phony Westerner? Yeah, I think it does. Eh? 
Well, what you're saying is then, I mean, even this argument about MPs living in the riding, and, and I've been asked this question, this is a very tough question. Would I be living in Quadra after the election? As I have I said to everybody, I would love to live in Quadra after the election, which would mean I would be living here and my husband would be living in Ottawa. And this, I think, would, you can see, present certain logistical problems, which I don't know either of us would, would be able to accept too easily. Are you downhearted? No, not at all. I'm never downhearted. My thanks to Jill Turner, wife of the Honourable John Turner, Prime Minister of Canada, at least until Tuesday night. Thank you, Jack. I've enjoyed you, being Jack. here.